On this example, we're given a polynomial function in an expanded form, and we're asked to answer some questions about this. So the first thing to note is each individual term of the polynomial has its own degree. So let's list those out. What we're looking for is what exponent each one of these variables is raised to. So on the first term, we have x to the seventh power, so the degree there is going to be 7. Next, we have a constant. So we could think of that as 4 times x to the 0 power, because x to the 0 is 1. So that term has a degree of 0. Next, we have degree 5. And finally, degree 8 for each individual term. Now, if we want to rewrite this in descending order, we want to align it from the highest degree term to the lowest. So in descending order, we're going to start with the 8th degree term, so negative 3x to the 8th. Next, the 7th degree term. We don't have any 6th degree terms, so we go down to 5. And we'll finish up by using the constant. And that takes care of all four of our terms, so f of x is rewritten in descending order. Now when we're asked the question about what's the degree of the polynomial, what we want to do is find the highest individual degree of a term. You don't add them together. Instead, we'll look at what we refer to as the leading term after it's written in descending order. That term has degree 8, so the degree of the entire polynomial is going to be 8. Next, our leading coefficient is the number out in front of the leading term. So in our case, we're just focused on the negative 3 out in front. And finally, the maximum number of real zeros is going to correspond with whatever the degree of the polynomial is. So in our case, the degree of the polynomial is 8, so our maximum number of real zeros is also going to be 8. All right, I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about the terminology and understanding polynomial functions. Good luck.